Well, hello again. Here we are, two videos, two days in a row. What is going on? Well, I'm taking a little time off work. My daughter's birthday is tomorrow. We're going to go hang out, and uh, wife's making a cake, and um, yeah, it should be a good time. She's going to be three, so you're not very old. Today, I told you, as I told you, I am now telling you that we are now going to do a review on the IGO L dripping rebuildable atomizer. I've spent a lot of time with this guy and it is what it sounds. A dripping atomizer is basically, uh, well, this particular rebuildable, if it's an RBA, rebuildable atomizer, it involves the old silica wick with wire. Wire. That's hard to see. But you get the idea. Yeah. Kenthal wire. I'm using, I believe, 32 gauge Kenthal wire. It seems to work for me. If it's bigger like that, you're going to get a little bit more resistance by the time it's, uh, you know, coiled and all that stuff. But you're basically wrapping up a wick with the wire. And uh, then you pull your drip tip off and you drip, drip drip, drip, just like that, and the wick soaks up the juice, and you vape. Mm -hmm. And it's not bad by any means. This is pretty, pretty good, you know. A lot of people have been complaining about the airflow with these saying that that one little air hole, if I can find it, there it is. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? No. Uh, yeah, it's kind of there. It's tough to see. See it right there, kind of coming into the in and out of the reflection on it? It's kind of there, right? No? All right, well, whatever. A lot of people have been complaining, well, I have drilled it out. I, and I may drill it out. I don't know. But to be honest with you, it's nothing like, say, a Vivinova, where it's a lot like... That you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. I don't think that's right. All right, so this is more like, oh, I don't know, maybe a Kanger? Any type of a Kanger tank, it seems to me anyway, that it's, you know, it's, it's don't think that it's going to be like a Nova or something like that, where it is really a stiff drop, because it's not a stiff drop. It's really... It's not bad, but apparently a lot of people, like the more expensive ones of these, uh, you know, they have a bigger air hole and they're a very airy draw. Why don't we talk about how much one of these guys goes for the Igo L? I really can't remember where I got mine. It might have been like Light Sig USA or something like that. Um, looks like you can get them as cheap as $13.95. Um, you know, so they're, you know, but I've heard as, mu uh, as much as like $17 too from other uh, reviewers talking about these things. So, you know, in that area, they're cheap enough, which is why I bought one because, you know, I, I gotta, I'm like you, I have to buy everything myself and, uh, money and, uh, bills and everything else, your vaping budget, you know, there's, there's only so much a guy can afford and I, was just getting into this, uh, to this sort of thing. So I thought, you know, why not go with a cheaper one? They had good reviews and everything, so why not? And yeah, so underneath, something I want to talk about right now, in case you've seen other reviews of this, people have been complaining that the top cap here and these, you know, you got these O-rings. The original ones, when they first came out, apparently, they had orange O-rings. This one is black O-rings, and that was like the second run of them. So this is what you should get if you order one. And in fact, I'll figure out where I got this from. I should have had that together to begin with, but I don't. And I'll put it in the, you know what I'm saying. And uh, that way you can, you know, rest assured that you'll get one of these because I'm sure if you've watched anybody else, I know Green Green has reviewed this, I know Pete Bissardo has reviewed this, they both said the same thing. You put the cap on and you can't even hold on to this without the cap popping off because it's so loose. 
I read about it last night, and they have fixed that problem with the black O-rings. Of course, Grim Green, I'm pretty sure his O-rings were black, and uh, it was slippy slide. It just fell right off. But look at mine. And uh, like I say, I read that that is no longer an issue. Well, with mine, I am really shaking it right now. Oh, there it went. <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened, though, and it's nice and moved up, obviously, too. A guy could wipe out the inside of that. But that was really shaking it to get it to go. I mean, that that was shaking it hard. Um, just trust me, they are not that. Um, they are not that. Hold on just a second. I got to get rid of my son. Hold on. I'll be right back. Yeah, and I am back. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that, you know, you want to kind of keep the O-rings kind of cleaned up. You know, don't be afraid to give them a little wipe off once in a while. And, uh, you know, those are really, those were really, really juicy. So had I done that, that would have never popped up. Um, it gets to the point, though, in my experience, that that bottom O-ring, uh, will catch on this, you know, and I think it's just due to taking it on or taking it on Taking it off and putting it back on all the time Which I've been doing a lot just because I've been experimenting with this because it's my first rebuildable atomizer um, Where it'll kind of and of course it didn't do it. It's just perfect. Maybe wiping it off helped and you know So I'm gonna shake it again for you. So you can oh, now it's popping off all the time. God, but either way um, go watch P. Bissardo and Gurn Green's videos. They can't, the point I'm trying to make is that it, it's gotten tighter. You, you want to be able to get this thing off. If it was too hard to get off, then it would be a pain to get in here and have to rebuild it or wiggle around your coils. Or sometimes people like to take this off and directly drip in there, which I have found I kind of like to do sometimes too to get it right onto the coils. So anyway, they, Grim Green and Pibasardo, you'll see if you check their video out, they can't, they can't even do this. They can't even just pick it up off the desk and then just slips off immediately. This does not do that. And I am, as you can see, I am wiggling it and it's, you know, you got to really give it, I, I'm just trying to make the point. If you've seen that, you know, well, you know, you didn't like that because you've seen another video and somebody was showing you that and it did pop off like these guys I was talking about, don't be discouraged if you want to get into a cheap rebuildable RBA because, you know, they have fixed the problem. I got one right here, and I'm like I said, I'll tell you the website I got it. Now, <clears throat> here is the deal. I spent all day with this thing, re-wicking, 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 rebuilding, 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 re-wrapping, re-wrapping, adjusting, prodding, poking, brushing, and uh, I tell you what, I had a heck of a time. And uh, you know, I've rebuilt a lot of things before with, you know success and failure, but th this one was a kind of a new thing for me to where I just wasn't happy with it because it's like, if I'm going to go through the trouble of, with, uh, of, of doing this um, and the whole dripping thing, which I do enjoy, it better be good, you know? I better not be able to, you know, vape a Nova or a Kane or something and get more flavor and or vapor than I can here I, or equal. I want it to be good or as good, you know? Um, and so I did a whole lot of research, and uh, because I couldn't find any videos uh, that were anything different than just you know putting the wick on the silica, and it was just oh take it, fold it in half, you know, over itself, and then just wrap the wick and put it to the post, put it to the post, and that's that, you know. I just didn't have that much luck doing that without problems uh, constantly occurring, you know, shorts happening, you know, it would work great for a while and then it would stop and I'm prodding around. Finally, I get onto the forums and all these experts, the guys that they like dedicate, you swear to God, they dedicated their entire life to re-wicking, uh, you know, and recoiling wicks, I guess, and doing nothing but RBAs. That's like, that is their thing. That is all they do is RBAs. They don't vape anything else. And they were all, you know, pretty much all of them in agreement that when it comes to, you know, an Igo L or rebuildable atomizer like this, they almost always use, use cotton. And some people are doing the low ohm thing where it's like 0.7 ohms. Well, then you have to have a mechanical mod 
you know, in order to fire it. And then it can get into dangerous territory when you're doing that because of the amp draw from your battery and you're being hard on your battery and things like that, which is why we have vent holes in the bottom of our devices, you know, to keep things from exploding. And uh, now other people have been doing a lot of uh, coils close together, and it seems like a majority of the people say the same thing. It's not necessarily about, you know, how big of wick you're using or how small, um, but cotton seems to work better than the silica wick. And also, um, you know, more wraps is generally better, you know, than less wraps and, and, and taking the chance and getting at that 0 0.7, 0 0.3, point, you know, Ohm, you know, get stay above that 1.3 ohm so any device can fire it, you know, and you can, they all say anyway, that's what they were saying last night, you can get just as good, equal, and possibly better. Um, there's a lot of variables to consider. You know, you want your coil to evenly touch every part of the wick as it goes across. Um, you know, you can use a syringe needle, people were saying, you know, to help you wrap. If you're going to stick anything in there, they said a paper clip is too big, a nail is too big. Uh, you're, you're not getting evenness across your coils by the time you jam a, uh, uh, okay, like this, a paper clip. Uh, come on, baby, get in my hand. Say I've got a paper clip, and I just kind of, you know, I'm sure a lot of you know this trick. You just stick it in there like that, and then you wrap your coil. By the time you pull, and when you get done with your coil, you pull that paper clip out and then it's supposed to be good right you know because you don't want it too tight because it'll burn or restrict the juice flow but you don't want it too loose because then the coils are just hanging out not touching anything and popping and not doing anything and, and you'll have a hot spot there's a lot of variables to this but I wanted to do it well and so using taking the advice of all these professionals I couldn't find a video on YouTube um, a lot of people are reviewing the IGO L but I decided if I'm gonna review it I want to be able to show you how to rewick it and I also want to show you how to rewick it or rebuild it and do something a little different so and, and have it be good and also easy and somewhat user-friendly as, as user-friendly as rebuilding this can be because it can it is a little difficult compared to some that's kind of nice if you're taking the next step into the rebuilding process uh, and getting into these sorts of things. You, this is a great start because it's cheap, it works well, and uh, it's a little bit more difficult. So when you get math, this mastered, you'll be able to do about it, anything, really, okay? And you'll be able to get stainless steel mesh, the Genesis style atomizers and stuff like that as well. So, at that, you know, I guess all that being said, I think I am going to stop the camera and I will point it down at my desk here for, which is a mess because I literally spent all day till three o'clock in the morning re-wicking or rebuilding these things until I finally followed these guys' advice and uh, now I want to show you how to do it and uh, to try to make it as easy as possible so you'll hopefully have a better experience with these things and um, you know, and learn something and be able to do this and without being intimidated and and this video will be worth putting out and it'll do something good because I like doing things good. All right, here we go. Ha, <sighs> okay, we are back. By the way, earlier um, when I was grabbing my son and telling you, ah, oh, I got to get my son out of here, it's not like he was like, Oh, Father, I just want to play, Father, I love you. And I was like, get out of here, you little... Nothing like that. He was actually holding a cat down because he was trying to train it or something. But uh, you should have seen the way he was holding this poor cat. Cats are a mystery. They cannot be trained, I told him. Anyway, so let me give... As you can tell, I got... I mean, I got wick happening here. Or uh, uh, wire, there's wick. I mean, you can't see a lot of the dirty stuff around. And here is our unit, okay? Let me show you. I should have really kept this on the device in order to, um, we can still do that, to get, uh, you know, the cap off. Cap off, cap off. There we go. Wiggling. I find that you just do the little wiggly thing and it pops right off. Um, or as you guys, I'm sure, are going to be laughing at me as I was, you know, bouncing it up and down and it falls off. 
You just said it wasn't going to fall off, and it fell off. Look at that, Beverly. All right. And we'll take this off. <laughs> and this is what you've got. An old coil, and there's co it's cotton in there. See if I can get you a better view of the coils itself. All right. Come on, baby. Yeah. It's pretty tough to see, I, I realize. But they're there, and that's just a black looking piece of cotton. It's actually just soaked in juice, so it's a dark juice. But I'm sure there's a little burningness to it because I have been vaping on this constantly. But uh, we're going to uh, loosen up both of these screws here, and um, we'll pull this old assembly off. Um, you know, if you're going to get into this sort of thing, you're going to get these little screwdrivers. Uh, I got a Stanley set here that you can get at, like, you know, your Shopco, Pomida, you know, for dirt cheap, just a little screwdriver set, and they work great. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these, but you're definitely going to need them. All right, so I'm unscrewing. Unscrewing. About the only thing you can unscrew in life, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you wish you could unscrew everything else, but you can't. And I guess that's pretty well loose. Let me try it again. I'm going to try to keep all this in camera. Stuff like this is kind of a pain working in these tight areas and trying to keep, you know, you literally have just this little area to try to keep everything in the camera there. And I will just kind of grab a hold of everything now that the screws are loose and kind of wiggle things around to try to get everything to come off and, uh, you know, without any wick or uh, wire breaking off and staying on. Did I get it all? Did I, did I, did I get it all? Did I, did I? It's kind of nice. Use the camera as like a magnifying glass looking at me. Ugly fingers, but I have guitar playing fingers, so the nails have to be very, very, very short. All right. Um, let's give this a little white. Clean out some of it a little bit. And you should always hum and sing when you're cleaning and smile while you're doing it too. And just take a deep breath and relax. All right, that looks better, right? So, here's one thing I'm going to tell you right off the get go. If you want to use wick, regular wick, you can. Or, you know, your, your silica wick, that's fine. Um, you can do that. Um, and uh, if you want to do the old loop method, you can do that. I'm going to tell you right now, whatever you do your loop, if you, you know, watch like uh, Pete Bissardo's video and he does it, when you do your loop, it's always going to, the loop is always going to face towards this side. So if you're, if you're ever doing that, make sure your loop end is facing this way so it can lay down into the big area. Otherwise, you'll have your big loop over here and you're like, oh shoot, I have nowhere to put it because it's a really tight little space there. Um, it would have been nice if, in other uh, devices, these screws... Here, let me use a little screwdriver at the pointer. Mm, isn't that nice? Yeah, these little screws. God, this is so hard. I could never be a weatherman. Well, the front is going to move in from the east, Sally. All right. And these guys normally are, like, right here uh, on a couple other devices. And that made a lot more sense to me. Because then you can, you know, you can stick your wire and stuff in there, and the rest of your wick and everything. See, I'm getting the hang of this. I could be a weatherman. Nicholas Cage, eat your heart out. All right. So, well, okay. For those of you who haven't seen the weatherman, it starred Nicholas Cage. I know he's not a weatherman. He's just an actor. All right. Um, where shall I begin with this? Well, we have to start by rewicking. So, get yourself a good lengthy piece of wire. Don't be afraid, okay? Just make it long, and I promise you, you will not regret that. It is a lot easier to work with if it's just a good long piece of wire. I can get this mess of wire. Oh my god. I really should have had this already done. See my wire mess? There we go. Um... I think I'm going to go longer. I found by far, and everybody else said the same thing, just don't try to conserve your wire. It's cheap. You can buy more. Just get a long piece of wire. It is so much easier. So I'm going to call that good. A pair of scissors works great for me. It's something that I just use, and a lot of people do. And it's not like I invented it. I'm like, yeah, man, the first guy to ever use scissors and re-wicking. God, give me the credit. All right. 
And uh, so I've got, you know, whatever, you know, one guy said, ah, four inches, but I think that's probably more than four inches. I don't know. Pretty long, right? I mean, it's hard to judge, but... Okay, now, so you will need your wire, which I have. Then, you are going to need this. By God, what is that? A marshmallow? You should roast it first. No, that's a cotton ball. It's a cotton ball. The answer was cotton ball. How much did they wager? You're going to tear a little piece of cotton off. Okay. Here we go. And then you're going to just start to shake. Roll it around. Roll it around. Roll it around. And you want the ends to be tapered, you know, to have like a bevel to where it's, you know, small and then it, as it roll, goes to the inside, it gets bigger. Now, let's say you've got, oh, you know, maybe it's a little too much cotton. Uh, fine. Rip a piece off, just like that. That's how it works. It's easy. And then it'll toughen up and become like a wick the more you, you know, you start working it. And just keep going and going and going. And now I've tore a little piece off, but in fact, I like that piece that I just tore off. I'm going to start using that. It's no big deal. It's cotton ball. They're cheap. I'm sure your wife or wives or you ladies have them sitting in your bathroom right now. What you use them for, I really don't know. I suppose to remove your fingernail polish. Do you use it for anything else? I don't know. I think that's the only thing that I know of right off the top of my head. And I'm still kind of working this. And just kind of, you know, use your best judgment, okay? I'm going to leave it like that. Remember, if you get it too small, chances are that's okay because the minute you put some liquid into that equation, that sucker is going to swell. But these things absorb so great and it will not burn. And you, not any more than wick will. Trust me, I've done a lot of cotton work. Chances are some of you have too. All right. <clears throat> so we have our wick and we have our kenthal. Um, here's the trick. This is not rocket science. This is not hard. Don't make it hard. I just use the biggest screwdriver in that in that set that I have. Well, last night I used more like the second to the biggest, and it worked fine. That's the nice thing about working with this cotton is we can make this as small or big as we need it. it well, I can't add to that, but I can always grab a new piece of cotton and do it and start again. All right, so. You, you know, try to do it a somewhat good job on this. Let me move some of this out of the way you know, pay a little bit of attention. You want to leave uh, a good bit of wire hanging out the other side where you're actually going to attach it to the post just to make your life a little easier. Don't worry about it being short because then it's not going to make your life easier, making your life hard, and we don't like that. All right, so I'm going to start wicking this. I'm going to come out a little bit. I'm going to grab that first part with my thumb as I get ready to start wicking and don't worry if it's not perfect. That's the beauty, beautiful thing also about this system is it doesn't have to be. But I'm going to try my best to make it, you know, well, maybe not because it's just so hard to do this on camera. Okay. I don't know how many wraps I've got on there. Let's count. One, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, sounds good to me. Let's go with seven. And you, some of you might be thinking, oh my god, seven wraps, that's more than I saw Pete Bissardo do. Well, I don't care, because this works. Now, I'm going to kind of, I don't know, um, maybe somewhat help pull that tight, pull that tight. And I'm just kind of letting it, <clears throat> you know, take its shape. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take everything and squish it all the way down. I'm going to just hold it there for a minute while it takes this shape, hopefully. Now look what you got. Everything's closer. Um, get that out of the way. There we go. So that's kind of popping up there. All right, let's we'll leave that down. Leave that down. There we go. I'm gonna now that end one, as you can plainly see, is kind of sticking out. You know, that's fine. Just give it a little shove. Keep shoving it. Hold it in for a little bit. Now another trick, you can use a Bic lighter to uh, heat these things up 
and then immediately dump them, put it in cold water. Because a lot of these new Kenthal wire, they have some sort of a machine oil on it, like to preserve it. And it's kind of nasty stuff. And a lot of people say, well, that's your break-in period. You know, you're going to get to get rid of that. You know, it'll get better when it breaks in. Well, the way you can break it in faster. And you know what? I'm, I think I'm happy with what I got here. I'm going to give it one more little squish. Hold it for a little bit. Now, some people, like they were saying, you know, not only will heating it up with a big lighter help with, uh, of course, I don't have a big lighter in front of me. Maybe you've got a barbecue grill lighter or something if you don't have a big lighter. Or go buy one or use a match. You just heat it up to the point where it just turns orange, the wire, and then just dump it, dunk it in some water, and then heat it up. People were saying heat it up three times to where it just glows red, and it won't take nothing but a big lighter. You can even do it on the stove top, they said. And then dump it in cold water, do that three times, and that'll get rid of your machine oil, but also it will harden everything into place. So that's great. All right, I'm going to pull this off of here. And uh, here's what we got. And that is pretty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not bad. And that will probably result into about a 2.3, 2.4 ohm coil. Um, and you'll learn really quick what works for you. You know, the small, these are tiny little wraps. We're not making big wraps around two loops here. So it's okay. I know that might sound low, but also you have more uh, uh, stuff here to play with. When You know, the more material, material, uh, material, material that you wrap around your screws, that's more length that you're adding, you know, and I like to do a full wrap to three quarters of a wrap and that'll up your ohms as well. There's my son squawking in the background. I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab a lighter at this point and I want to show you because I do want to get some of this machine oil off of here. I'll be right back. Wow, time flies when you're on television, I guess. All right, so I'm back and I have a, a big, uh, just like I said, a barbecue. Uh, you know, propane uh, lighter thing for your barbecue grill. Because I just want to, you know, sure, I can always describe these things to you, but it's even better if I can just show you and you can see firsthand. All right. So not only will, like I said, it will take that machine oil, but it helps to lock this, wire, this wick into place the way we got it formed here, okay? And uh, it will make it tough for it to come out of that, that shape. So I'm going to come in here with my lighter. Woo, fire! See how that gets red hot really quick like that? All right, I'm going to kind of come down here to the legs. Try to keep this in. Where is it? Oh, just burnt my finger. That's nice. Woo, hot. Okay, try again here. There it goes. Burning those suckers to red hot. I'm going to dump it in the water. And I'm going to do it again. And it's getting hot. I'm going to try to keep this in the frame for you. And into the water. Put on some paper towel. You know, and you don't have to do this, but I, I tell you, when I finally did do it, I, I liked it. One more time. Okay. All right, at this point, we are ready, as you can see, to rebuild or you know put it in, uh, on this cotton and I think I think this is going to be good where can I set this water without spilling it all over the place I probably will anyway but hey it's just water right so I'm going to try to get an idea here I'm just kind of trying to look you know like down see how I'm trying to look down that just to kind of get an idea of you know is this too big well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick one end of this in my mouth. You guys know what I'm talking about. Just like you're threading uh, threading through the eye of a needle. 
Mm, 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 mm. And then you have a nice fine point, which you want. And you can do the little twisty thing, you know, as it comes out of your mouth. Why does this all sound so sick? My God, this this guy's a freak, Beverly. Turn it off. All right, now I'm gonna try to get in here. It's tough. It's t oh yeah, you know, you want to see what I'm doing? Just trying to kind of get in there. If I can just get it out the other side, we're home free. Because then you just pull it on through. There it goes. Doesn't it? Oh, Beverly, this guy just doesn't even know what he's doing. Why am I seeing that all the time? Is it even funny? Do you guys think that's funny? I don't know. God, I am not having any luck with this. It was so much easier last night. That's going. You know, it might be a little too big. I'm trying to decide that, in fact. Okay, in fact, here's what I'm going to do at this point. I'm looking at the other side of this. And it has more of an even taper on the other side of this wick. It, it, it goes from smaller to bigger. <laughs> Let's try that. Perfect. Now... See how that works? Very nice. Get it to where it's just kind of snug, okay? Because you want all these coils touching. I'm going to try to kind of make... And you can shape it while it's in there, you know, if you want to make it a little thinner, whatever. But either way, looks pretty good. And then at this point, I also like to prod just a little bit. You know, just take a look at your coils, you know, if you want to kind of spread one out a little bit. Go ahead. This is where you make your adjustments. Everything's perfect in our world. Just fix it like that. All right. All right. I like it. Whatever. Now, um, I want to. I think I'm gonna try to. Yeah. There we go. I like that even better. Just to. I just pulled it through a little more. Is all I did there. I still don't really like how that last one, I'm not a fan of them touching. Some people say it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just kind of pull that out a little bit. Much better. Uh, I brought it a little too much, so that's fine. I'm going to try to squeeze it back together just a little bit. And then kind of pull on the cotton as I'm done to make sure things are nice. And, you know, you can kind of wiggle this back and forth just to try to make sure everything has, you know, good, nice contact. And let me hold it up to the light. You probably can't see this now, but I'm just looking, I'm just spinning this around just to make sure that none of those coils are touching each other. <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of like the dances in high school. You don't want, you don't want them touching each other. All right. Let's see here. Well, if you're the faculty, of course. Yeah, anyway. Well, now we're going to get our uh, I go L back and ready to uh, wick up. Wick up, damn you! All right. This part, I'm not going to lie. This is the hardest part for me. Some of you guys, you know, you dudes out there that are good with your hands, you know, you're maybe your mechanics, you're going to have no issues with any of this. I'm going to try to get my light out of here. Yeah, okay. You know, you're not going to have any problems with this, but if you're like me and the, all the talents that you have are pretty well useless, um, well, this is going to be tough for you too. Um, but here's a couple of rules of thumb. I'm looking, right? I'm looking. I'm looking at where my screws are. I can plainly tell I got more material on this side. So I'm going to flip it around because I want all that stuff sitting down in the uh, cup or whatever you want to call it. You basically want this thing up in the air uh, like that. You, this is not The coils are not going to be sitting down there, otherwise they're touching the metal and it's going to short out. You don't, also don't want any of these coils touching the screws. Um, it's okay if the very first wrap of each one touches, uh, of each side touches the screw, really. I guess that's kind of okay. But I like to have just a little separation there. So this is what you're going for. This is up in the air. One side will be higher than the other because you've got one wrap that's wrapped high, one wrap that comes out the bottom, one wrap that comes out the top of this, you know, the wick assembly that you've just created. So 
while trying my best to keep this all in camera for you guys. Also, you want to wrap, in my experience anyway, I mean, maybe you guys find it differently. You want to wrap uh, your, you know, your uh, coil around the direction that the screw turns to tighten. Otherwise, as you tighten it, and if it's wrapped the other way, you're actually trying to unravel the loop you've just made, okay? So you're going to make a loop. Let's see here. Here goes something. I'm going to try to leave a little space here. I'm going to just try to just kind of just try. Oh my god. Oh, I hate this part. See that? See the trouble that I have with this crap? I've got my other, uh, <clears throat> my other coil trying to get in the way here. I'm trying to hold this all together. Some people actually do all this part before they even put their wick together. I like a solid wrap, and I got a solid wrap on there by God. And let's see how this works. See if I can put that back where it was. Just trying to move my coil of my assembly around to make sure things are uh, kosher there. And I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that down. Okay. Come back, screwdriver. Don't roll off. All right. And what do I got? How does that look? I guess that looks okay. I'd like it to be a little further away, but oh well. What I got's what I got. Now I'm gonna. Oh, see, I didn't even get any. All right. So I'm gonna loosen that up again. Maybe. I don't know. You, know, you just want to kind of hold it up there next to the screws. Ah, this is just so difficult for people like me who's just not, you know, it's a tight area to work in. It really is. Okay, I know I got some there. Okay, I know I got it that time. Okay, I know we put that one down. Assuming it stayed in. Nope, it did not. Hmm. All right. See, I knew this was going to happen to where I was really going to fumble and, and fight with this and make it look impossible. It's not impossible. I'm going to just straighten this leg out here. It's just, I'm not going to lie, for me it's hard, but other people I've seen do this and they just make it look easy and, you know, just because I have a problem or a, 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 a hard time with this doesn't mean that you're going to. In fact, let's just go ahead and try going against my theory of, uh, you know, making sure that you have it wrapped a certain way. And you can even hold it with your teeth, give it a good yank to try to keep that tight. I'm kind of holding on to the wick as I, as I, you know, try to tighten this baby down. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, don't try and, don't try and strip out the screw head as you're really trying to get this tight, because it doesn't have to be that tight. Okay, I got that. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of what I have going on here is my. Come on, where you at? There we go. My thumb is wedged just underneath that coil, kind of holding it up to keep it, you know, because you want this. Come on, baby. There we go. You want that to stay up in the air, rough, you know, kind of. But you also don't want it, you know, too close to the screw. So I'm just going to, God, how can I do this to try to keep this on camera for you? This is, this is so tough. Everything is so tough. All right. Now, I definitely got a wrap on there. I'm going to try to back that. I'm trying to kind of back that, uh, pull this back a little bit, you know, this uh, whole assembly back a little bit to try to make sure it's not 
you know, rubbing up other coils or rubbing up against it. And it actually looking down at it kind of looks all right. Try to give you a little light, perhaps. I don't know if that just made it worse. It's uh, looking down there. It uh, doesn't look bad. You know, you want to see a little space in between. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. And uh, you want to hold on to your coil assembly because it might try to move on you as you tighten that down. I've just got it snug. I'll give it a little, uh, a little uh, tug. Okay, it looks good. Now you can do the old wiggle thing and take those off. What I've been doing though is using a pair. Where did they go? There they are, underneath the big wire. Pair of scissors. Okay. I think it's good for you guys to see somebody struggling with this. You know, it might motivate you and make you feel better about yourself and realize, hey man, at least I'm not as big of a screw up as he is. I could totally do that. He can't even do it. Look at this guy. Yeah, you're right. I suck. Just try to trim it down as close as I can is generally how I do it. I see another little spot there. This is going to be probably a high ohm thing by the time it's done because i got a full wrap around each coil. Or I mean around each screw. Because remember, that uh, that length of stuff is going to, you know, going around your screws is going to increase your ohm. So we got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. By the time we're said and done, looks like six wraps around there. Just kind of inspecting things one more time. Looking around at my coils, I, I don't want them touching each other. I don't like them touching each other. Sometimes <clears throat> people don't care about that. They'll leave them touching each other. They don't care. And I guess it works, but I don't know. I just don't do it, whatever. So I can prod them around a little bit. Just make sure. And remember, this cotton's going to swell up a little bit as soon as we get some juice going. All right. In fact, at that point, I'm going to take this and just kind of fold it down in there. Just kind of. Tap it in. Just tap it in. Now give it a little tap. It's all in the hips. All right. Somebody's going to comment and say, hey, I know that movie. All right. And I think what I will do now is just go ahead and cut that part somewhat flush. I like that. You know, just to where I can, you know, it'll hold a little liquid there. You know, I can take a screwdriver. And kind of tuck that in there if I want. And I definitely have wicks sitting down there in the uh, base area. That light's just making it more difficult. Yeah, all right. So let's just take a little liquid because you don't want to burn anything as we test this out. I'm going to just kind of get that baby started wicking a little bit, all right? Dang webcam, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I need a new uh, processor or something. I got a, it's an old, old processor. I built this computer, but I noticed my last video was very shaky and stuff. And I'm noticing my web camera is doing a lot of freezing type stuff as I do fast motion. Or maybe it's my software. I use Logitech software to record. But anyway, that's nice and moist. And at this point, we might as well put it on a device, check our ohms, give it a test fire, and check for hot spots. So, okay, so I'm back, and I've got it onto the device right now. And uh, I got a, you got to be kidding me, 3.7 ohms. I would like it lower than that. My, the one I just did that was almost identical, of course, it was smaller wraps. I used a bigger screw uh, screwdriver to wrap it around. So now I remember I'll go more more like uh, four wraps would have been perfect and uh, brought it down to the around the two something area. But that's okay. Let's see if we got vapor. We do. How does it look for firing as far as the coils themselves? It's pretty good. 3.7 ohms. It's ridiculous. How much battery voltage do I have left in this thing? Um, 3.6 volts. That's ridiculous. I should be really... If, if you're using a high ohm device like I've just built here, you want stacked batteries so you can get a true 6 volts out of No question about it. So let me grab some stuff. Okay, so we have stacked 
batteries in here now. And you can see it's putting on plenty of vapor. I don't see any hot spots. Let me turn off the light here and see if I can. I mean, everything looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just kind of, you know, I just wish this wasn't such a high moment. Usually people are like, oh, that's a lot lower than I was wanting. Well, for me, it's a lot higher than I was wanting. But hey, it's working. We have vape. Let me, uh, before I put that lid back on, let me just drip a few more drops. And hey, you know, this is all part of it. You know, sometimes it's going to happen. Nothing is perfect. And that's how we learn. So, all right. But you can see, I mean, it was so easy to, to thread that cotton through there. The point of making the wick part of it, the wick assembly, was easy. And a lot of you were going to have a lot easier time than I did. Uh, you know, doing the post part of it. I'm just not very handy that's, at that sort of thing, working in those tight little spaces like that. Um, you know, so don't, you know, I'm just not very good at those sorts of things. So don't be discouraged by that necessarily. If you're good at that sort of thing and you've got a background in it, uh, like everybody else has said, you want to line up your air hole uh, to be right in front of your coils. We know right where our coils are. If you can even see that. Anyway. Um, finding the, this tiny little air hole, putting it right in front of the coils, coming down. Let's, hey, let's have a bait. And that tastes great. You know, like I said, we burned the, the uh, wick, so it just doesn't really taste like brand new stuff. It's, it's already in the breaking in process. And as you go, that uh, cotton will swell up just a little bit more. The wicks, uh, the, the coils going to kind of seat a little bit more and change a little bit here and there. It'll kind of form itself. And you'll find that it gets just better and better and better. But plenty of vapor going on in there. Definitely. Everything is really working pretty good. I uh, drip a couple more drops here, right down the drip tip. Usually what I'll do is I'll just take uh, the drip tip off and just pour right down in this big bowl they got to see I'm sloppy. I'm just trying to keep it all on camera for you guys. I mean, not like you wouldn't know how to drip. God, if you're watching this video, you, you don't need to see how to drip down a drip tip. Plenty of vapor, <laughs> plenty, plenty of throat hit. <laughs> That's the other thing about this. Now, a lot of other people I've said I've noticed too that are like, wow, this sucker really increases your throat hit. Um, let's see here. I'd like to see what my homage uh, is now as well. Um, let's see resistance. See what our resistance is. Because you'll find that your resistance is going to change as you keep, uh, you know, vaping a little bit. It breaks in a little bit, then it's going to turn into more uh, what the resistance is actually going to be. And I've got 3.8 ohm on this thing. That is just insane. In fact, I'll probably rewick another one uh, after I get off the because it's a lot easier and quicker to do it when you're not on camera trying to fiddle with it too. And everything's, you know, it's working just fine. <coughs> I'm just trying to, you know, give you guys a rough idea of what it's like. Flavor's good, though. Man, that flavor's good. Anyway, that's what I got for you. That is it. I'm sure this was a long video. I'm looking down uh, 20. Yeah, all my videos are so long. I'm sorry about that. I just try to, you know, explain things and have a little conversation with you guys while I'm at it, too, you know. Uh, other than that, that's all I got. Everybody pick up your RBAs that are probably way better built than mine. But, hey, I hope that this video helped you. I, I wanted to go through the trouble and go through the uh, everything uh, to 
to give you a different way of how to re-wick something and make it as easy as possible for you. And as you saw, that that's really, there's nothing hard about what I did. If I can do it, anybody can do that. And, uh, you know, it's a great way to just wrap it around a little screwdriver. You can wrap it around a nail, hey, whatever, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, the smaller your loops, the lower resistance it's going to be. Thread one thing through there, you know, nice. That cotton makes it really easy to go nice and tight. A lot of people say, and I think I'm in agreement, that cotton just wicks better. Even in my Vivinovas, I tend to have better luck with cotton than I do with silica. And it's easier, and it's cheap. Everybody's got a cotton ball laying around, right? And if not, your wife does. But if you're a dude, you've got cotton balls. Well, let's have a vape. Everybody, thanks for watching. I still... <laughs> <coughs> Jesus, you know, it really gives you a hell of a throat hit. I mean, there's something about these RBAs that, you know, it, it's got a little more something-something than these other devices. It takes a little getting used to, and uh, I'm still trying to get used to it. It's it's cool, though. All right. And another thing I want to point out while I just thought of it, you're going to notice that this base gets hot. I mean, it'll really get hot on you, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't be worried about it. Everybody, have a great rest of your day. I'm going to cook some baked tacos tonight in the oven. My daughter's birthday tomorrow, taking a little time off work. Feels good. It's summertime. The evenings have just been gorgeous. Got the air conditioner on. Uh, hey, life is, uh, you know, life is okay. It's always okay. All right, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching, and we will talk to you next time, all right? Until then.